Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled. I am Peter, that is Connor, and we are going to talk about The Deuce Season 3, Episode 2. It is called Morta de Fame. So, full spoilers for the episode as always. And first of all, apologies that this episode is fairly late. Uh, Connor was sick this week um, and delayed some stuff, so this is uh, just us getting to it now. So obviously episode 3 will be back to kind of the similar late Tuesday, early Wednesday time that we typically get these up. But uh, we're here to talk about episode 2 and we have a bunch of things happening. Uh, I think we'll start we'll start in LA. We'll start with Laurie, I think. Um, Why not? We'll go with the sunny side of things since it feels kind of warm today. Um, we have Laurie uh, sort of being pressured into more jobs by her boyfriend slash, well not manager, manager's the, the woman, but you know, the boyfriend who's clearly yeah, making money off of her. But feels like an agent, even though he's not an agent. Yeah. Pimper Jace is what I'm going to refer to him as. Pimper Jace, there you go. Uh, she is on a set, She's got, there's this notable director she's working with, and she's doing some sort of weird hillbilly cousin <laughs> movie. And the guy goes to stick a piece of corn uh, up her ass. Is, 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 is the, the and she's having none of it. No, she gets very upset and she demands to know A, who the weird guy is who's watching. Turns out that's the guy that owns the house they're shooting. They're shooting that. And that means he gets to watch, apparently. That, those are the rules. Um, Seems fair enough. And she's not very happy. She calls her agent and her agent says, look, your career's not in actually that great a place. This is a really notable director. You just have to say yes and play ball. You have to do this. You don't have the power you think you do kind of thing. And... You know, she's not very happy about it, and then later on, when she's with the agent, she explains, hey, are you putting money by? Are you saving things? Because this is not going to last forever, and you're getting a reputation for being awkward. Uh, yeah. So you, you kind of need to start, like, banking what you've got, and, you know, sort of, you know, putting things away. And she agrees to do whatever this company asks her to do. It's this, this notable company that's hired her for this job. And she's notably never received a check for her payment before because when she's done with the job, she's handed a check, says, Oh, you can cash that tomorrow. And she's like, But I sucked a dick today. <laughs> um, and, she is very used to cash in hand, isn't she? Yeah, which maybe, maybe you know, maybe also ties into her wanting more cocaine or something like that. She wants to just go and buy some. She can't buy some with a check. Uh, it could be, but it genuinely felt like she was yeah. perplexed by the concept of having to wait. Yeah. So, but the police show up, the neighbour phoned the police, so she she doesn't want to be, you know, taken in by the cops, presumably because she's got cocaine or whatever else on her, and does a runner out the back uh, and trips. Yeah. It's, it's kind of a comical sequence, but it's it's kind of shown just how ludicrous her life is right now. Um, where, because at one point with her agent, she says that, hey, like, can you get me some, maybe some non-adult jobs, get me some proper film jobs? And she's like, I'm not that type of agent. I don't have those contacts. I, I, I ain't got those connections. Yeah. So we're in Hollywood. It's like, yeah, not quite. Yeah, we're on the other side of the hill, I think was the way she put it. Yeah. Uh, so, no, like, like her stuff is, is going along. Uh, obviously, it feels a little bit self-destructive, but it's also fairly comical in the, the various scenes. It's hard not to laugh at someone trying to get a car in the, uh, you know, he's in this outfit, he's got the hat on and the dungarees. He's yeah. like, I'm going to show you how we do it in Iowa, you know. It's hard not to laugh a lot about that. That was a terrible accent. I know it was terrible. But but that was, even by your standards, that was particularly bad. Irrelevant. Move on. What's your thoughts? Sorry, uh, what were you saying? I got distracted by the accent there. You, you, you were saying it was comical. Yeah, I mean, it is. Uh, yeah. it's, it's sad and tragic, but it's kind of funny. It's, it's a ridiculous type of tragic. It is, yeah. Yeah. And, then, you know, likewise, you know, we're dealing with... with uh, with um eileen i was just trying to say between eileen and irene because they've given me this problem uh but eileen uh has the problem where she's 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 working on this new movie she's she's interviewing melissa and she's going to maybe make a movie based on their experiences uh you know the yeah kind of based on the various experiences of the girls around in new york and you know she kind of opens up about her first kind of experience being a prostitute the first time she was paid for something they both do you know we hear melissa was essentially paid by another like kid uh when she was like 14 or something like that um yeah. and you know eileen we find out was was paid for a massage but it turned into something else and she talks about how, how big and disgusting and unwashed the guy was and it's all yeah all very nasty but she was very aware that when she took the the job that there was a this is this was what the job was and then oh it's a massage kind of was like yeah or maybe it's not that bad and then when it came that it, it not that she you know you know she was she was 
kind of she'd gone in kind of expecting that in 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 that way. So it wasn't like a complete shock. No. Um, I think it's one of those things that it's a shock anyway. Even if she thinks she knows what she's expecting, the first time it happens, I don't think. Oh, probably, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so she's she's telling she's telling uh, Harvey this, and he has to point out again that he's not going to fund this. He's done doing the artsy movies. He can't do this, and she gets pissed at him because she just wanted to bounce ideas off of him. She wasn't here for money, um, and I guess especially pissed at him when he's like, "Hey, I need you to fill in for an all director tonight." Uh, but you still need money, right? You can still do the job. Uh, and yeah. she calls him a sellout. She storms out. She's not happy. Uh, and we see she's not happy on set as well because they're they're filming this scene and she just looks bored because it's just this basic sex. Because cause earlier on when she's asking what the scene is, it's like, okay, so there's this like couple having sex on the bed in a hotel and the French maid's watching. And she's like, she's let me guess. Me the French maid joins in. What a twist. <laughs> <laughs> what a twist. And he's just like, what do you know? Guess it sells. Yes. Uh, but she tries to direct him to be more active and energetic. Cause even the, the performers look kind of bored. And she just gets them to, she's like, hey, French maid, do something French. And she just starts doing this bad French accent. Like, oui, oh, monsieur. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, um, yeah. And they all start giggling, but they are having a bit more fun. I mean, the guy's a little bit, he's like, what am I meant to do now? He's like, do you just lie there and just let them lie riff. Lie there and enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, you let them riff because they're, they're, they're getting creative. And she's just kind of yeah. giggling and it's, it's just you know the 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 wall she's hitting now because you know season two you know Candy or Eileen was very much like hitting this this artistic like uh, blossoming of herself right and then she's been making movies in these these last five years but now we're at the point where Harvey can't fund it anymore and she she's hitting this new thing and then speaking of new things she she's on a date with with Corey Stoll who. Uh, they're getting to know each other, and he's like, oh, yeah, I'm a f- in finance, it's boring, don't ask me about it. Um, and she admits what she does, and admits... She, she starts, like, easing it in, so, oh, yeah, filmmaker. Yeah. And, and it just, you yeah. know, it gets worse and worse and worse. Yeah, yeah, it, it, she keeps going deeper and deeper with it, but the funny thing is, she doesn't necessarily have to go as deep as she did on this first date, like, okay, because right now, as far as, as far as we're aware, at least, all she does is direct it. She's behind the camera now. Uh, it doesn't seem like she's actually on camera anymore. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's all she does, yeah. Yeah. Um, but she says, no, I used to be in, and then eventually, obviously, admits that she used to be a prostitute, and you know, you're reading his reactions in this scene, and you're kind of waiting for him to... It's kind of what she's doing. She's waiting for him to react and get scared and run off. And like, What the hell is this all about? Which would be a reasonable reaction. Not, not like, you know, the... the okay, this is what the, the information is, but as to, why are you telling me all of this right now? Hmm. Uh, but he, you know, he stays very calm, he stays kind of interested and wants to know more, and uh, this is new for her. Um, I mean, she's just a part of it, she's just to the guy being interested when they find out what she does, because then they're excited about doing that once, but then it not being a relationship, just running off after, oh, I, you know, I had sex with a porn star, and then they can run yeah. off kind of thing um but he is you know he tries to assure that that's not the case here that he he's interested and wants to know her and then it's kind of backed up by a scene after this where he takes her to a dinner uh, date with like a group of his friends there's, there's a bunch of people from his world so they're all kind of like upper middle class kind of wealthy and they're talking about something in the news or whatever and the subject comes to her and she kind of sugarcoats it and then he jumps in and says no no she's she's being you know uh like kind of formal here but but she's yeah. she's actually a she does artful porn film she has uh, what was the phrase she used fem erotica fem erotica that was it yeah. and you know and it becomes this thing where instant because i was worried i was actually starting to feel kind of tense in this scene i was like oh is, is this going to get really embarrassing or really awkward because the way they react are they going to say something they're going to make fun of her are they going to act weirded out and they don't and they just start asking questions and again it's kind of what she's going through in the scene is that she's this is exactly what she's probably worried about and instead they're just genuinely interested like, oh, i need to ask questions i need to know things do you know what this reminds me of yeah so you know so we watched recently uh mind hunter mm. uh, yeah the start you know the start of the second season where you know it's, it's like well I, this is what i do and it's kind of this taboo subject and everyone's like oh interesting sure sure yeah Tell i can more. see it yeah um but it's kind of this thing where these people are accepting her and maybe she's oddly entering a new social circle um yeah in a way that she maybe hadn't expected to be able to and Corey Stoll's kind of been this this conduit yeah. for that so um is this as healthy as it seems right now hopefully it is hopefully she gets uh, something no, knowing the show probably not but i mean 
I don't know. I could see her have a happy ending. I could see. I, I think Vincent and Frankie might be screwed, but Eileen, yeah. I can see having a happy ending. No, I can. I'm not sure it's here though. I, I don't know what it is, but I'm not sure it's this. We'll see. We'll, we'll see how this goes. Yeah. Uh, it could, uh, could could go dark. Yeah, I will say. Uh, you know, talking about these two scenes, better, but it did remind me of probably my biggest problem with this episode mm-hmm. uh, is the the passage of time. Um, uh, you know, I infer from context that quite a bit of time seems to pass over the course of this one episode. Uh, you know, days, weeks, I don't know. It, it feels like a reasonable amount of time over this episode. But I didn't actually feel that. I didn't feel any time passing. It was only when we jumped to an event that was clearly significantly later than a previous one that I went, oh, I guess time's passed. I, I, didn't was, actually... a, I, I was like a week or so, cause, uh, mainly because of the Shea stuff with the hospital. Yeah. Maybe I kind of framed it for me as to like you know it's like about a week and a half or something like that. Um, yeah, I guess I guess this is a a downside to it being a very fragmented cast is that okay by the time we check in with them again it's been like a whole week and it doesn't uh, you know I feel like oh where did that week go? Uh, I, just, I just I felt it in this episode more than I ever have on this show before. So we catch up with Bobby who's still wearing his stupid wig and we see his son again who I didn't even recognize at first he, he you know like I was like he looks familiar but I couldn't quite place who he was it wasn't until the scene at the church where I was like oh it's Bobby's son that's right <laughs> that's who yeah, that is because he has a scene in the club where his friend gets kicked out um because they're he gets angry starts to pick a fight because someone's taking their cocaine and uh, big Mike ends up throwing him out and yeah. he calls the police which leads to a whole scene where the police show up and empty the place out and we also see that you know the cops who are being paid off don't necessarily have the power anymore to stop this. Uh, so yeah, you know, it's we, above that pay grade. So things are changing, you know that goes that feeds out like the Goldman plot and the the Alston plot. But yeah, um, yeah. So at, at this, uh, what's, what is this exactly? This church event. I wasn't a hundred percent sure. It, it could have been like a confirmation, maybe. You went to Catholic school. You're supposed to know. I know, this. but it was very vague as to what actually <laughs> was going on. Yeah, look. I, uh, clearly, my Catholic it was very different to, to this. The, the, you know, the, the very different branches did, of Catholicism. Did you not get slapped in the face? That's, that upsets me. No, not not <laughs> once. Damn it! <laughs> Damn no, it! Sorry. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, Joey brings up to his dad. Hey, I was thinking I've got this like this uh, party with some of the guys coming, and I figured we could hire some of the girls. You know, it was a sort of little group trip. Um and it's like, okay we'll talk and we you know later on we see them setting up and it's like okay communication by beepers uh black frank is coming with you to be sort of the the liaison and bodyguard kind of thing yeah and uh he gets his authority questioned a little bit yes um you know, it, you know as to what exactly he does and like she's kind of got a point but it's also true you do need someone in charge who typically doesn't do a lot of the other work <laughs> that's just a typical yeah, he's like oh look i'm not here to explain what management does i'm yes. just here to do it and uh, I mean, there's a point, I suppose. There's, there's, there's a point on both sides here, but the, the complaints brought here are, are equally valid to most uh, yeah. management roles, I suppose, and, and typical are, services. Yeah. So, but, but we tend to agree that we, generally speaking, need management to yeah, some degree. We need someone in charge making choices and doing some things that everyone else can't yeah. be allowed to do. So, uh, yeah. it, it's ultimately, but yeah, so it's just funny though that they're questioning him. They seem as a bit of a, a schlub, a bit of an idiot. Um, yeah. But... Uh, so we see this party happening and Joey collects money from everyone and gives it to Black Frankie and she says, hey, so that's 300 ahead. We made, you know, you know, it's like how many guys in there? We made this much. And hey, this could be a thing. We could probably charge more because these, these guys can afford it. And maybe you could cut me in a little bit and it could be this new service we provide. This almost like a escort catering service, if, if you want to call, call it girl. that. Sorry? Call girls, essentially. Well, yeah, but I mean, it's more of a, yeah, yeah, a package but... deal. It is a little bit, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. um, so that seems to be something that's going to happen soon. Uh, yeah, and he's getting into to, to Wall Street as well. He's doing that sort of thing. It's like you know, providing some tips. Yes, yes. He's yeah. trying to offer his dad, hey, do you want to invest some of your money? And he, he's Bobby's not having and any. It's of like it. I don't don't really do gambling. It's like hey, when I tell you, it's not gambling. Some. Uh, inside trading going on by the sounds of it yeah and bobby does have an else in the doctors where he goes and gets uh his results and the doctor kind of drags it out a little bit until bobby grabs the file and like demands to know like what does and it say like, wait none of this means anything to me yes 
And he's like, no, you, you, there's, there's no evidence to suggest that you have the disease, you have AIDS. Uh, and he's like, ah, oh, you should leave me that, Doc. I actually have a very similar experience to this, bizarrely, uh, where I got really upset at my optometrist because he spent a minute explaining that the photographs at the back of my eye could show the starting signs of a, a brain tumour. And I'm like, why is he telling me that? In my head, I'm like, why is he telling me this? Why, why, why are you explaining all this to me? And he's like, but this is completely normal, you're fine. I'm like, start with that! <laughs> Start with yours is fine, you're you're fine, and then tell this me is, the point this is of the how test. They get their kicks. And also, it's to make sure you pay attention because uh-huh. you, you you'll be damn sure you'll be paying attention to what he's saying if you're thinking that you might have a some sort of brain tumor. Whereas if he's just rattling on after he's told mm. you you're fine, yeah, you're not gonna listen. He's 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 educating you. He's doing you a favor. I'm just saying that there's there's a way to do this, and that was not it. Uh, but uh, so Bobby's all happy that he's uh, he's not got AIDS. <laughs> so, to be fair, reasonable reaction. Reasonable reaction. Though most people are happy when they find out they don't have a, a life-threatening disease. That is that is very yeah. true. Uh, so we mentioned Shay earlier. She uh, is very ill, has ver- various yeah, problems. She's in a bad place and wants some ginger ale. Wants some ginger ale. They take her to the hospital, and Abby kind of sets her up. She's got a friend there who kind of like you know we'll we'll get around the medical expenses. We'll take care of it. Um, and we'll give her a room and so on. And of course, the, the, the sort of bittersweet end of the episode is that despite the fact that they've given her all this help, they've given her treatment, um, and they're looking out for you know her and um, Loretta to like, sort of have some debates, uh, you know, we find out Abby started the whole Women Against Porn thing, but has kind of abandoned it recently because... Or not abandoned oh. it completely, but abandoned the way that they're going about things now because it's become more about censorship. Um, they got a little bit militant for her yeah. liking by the sounds of it. And she's like, no, like we have to apply the same rules to this as everything else, so they mean nothing. Um, yeah. And, you know, so uh, so Abby's, you know, strict in her beliefs, uh, so it gives us that. But when she comes back at the end with some flowers, uh, she has disappeared. And it's like, you know, where is she? It, it kind of goes back to last season. Remember, she had that whole thing when she was with Irene. And, yeah. you know, obviously Irene, like, maybe could have been coming on too strong, but it was this idea that she then went back to the right. street. She went back to the pimp. Um, so, you know. I mean, to be fair, we don't know exactly what's happened here. We don't. For all we know, she could have died at this point. It, oh, that's true, If yeah. they tell me that, I, I'm willing to believe it. You know, you know, it, it, it wouldn't be a surprise. Yeah, she may, maybe she did die. But given her past, I just assume she'd, you know, relapsed again. again. No, again, yeah. I think either plays as a, as a kind of open ending here, as it could have gone either way. Yeah. And then you you have uh, some other little tidbits here or there, you know. Obviously, we've not got to Frankie yet, but uh, and Vincent. But uh, I'll just mention briefly. There's, there's a couple of scenes with Alston and Goldman. Alston's on a date at one point with one of the cops. He's kind of getting to know. Uh, Goldman's still going to see the clubs, and uh, uh, although notably he was using a condom, which I think uh, smart move uh, at this particular juncture for him. Um, yep. But they're, they're talking about going after the money, uh, going after the, the owners of the buildings, uh, which is something they typically have, they don't do in the past. But yep. they're, they're making a point of doing it here because uh, they think it will enact real change. Um, so, yeah, to go to that path. So there's just a couple of plot points to mention um, on that front. Yeah, no, nothing major in this episode, but just ticking along. Just sticking along. Uh, so the other main stuff, of course, is Frankie and Vincent. Frankie even more so than Vincent, to be honest, because Frankie, mm. uh, he has this couple come to see him at the start uh, who want to give them their their home movies as porn. It was like, hey, we recorded this. And they show them this kind of funny scene where the, the mailman came delivering a, delivering a package whilst they're in the middle of making this video. So they answered the door well, without disconnecting, shall I say. <laughs> without putting any clothes back on and just sort of have it happen on camera. Uh, and you even hear them say on camera, like, oh, uh, we should get this on camera. This will be funny or whatever. Like, the, yeah. like They're aware of what they're doing. And they are. Frankie like sees money, like, he sees like, light up in his eyes, and he goes to see a guy who's not impressed with him. You know, it's another sort of uh, you know businessman slash criminal dude. Yes, not not Rudy though. Not is Rudy is yeah is important. Uh, who's not impressed with him because he uh, you know he's he's not wearing a suit. He's he's got he's got like a plastic bag with his tapes in it. <laughs> he's you know yeah he hasn't come with any equipment to show him. Yeah. So he's like, I'm not very impressed, but I'll have a look and see if I'm interested. But Rudy's very pissed, and you know Vincent tells him he's pissed. There's actually a really impressive shot here where uh, Vincent and Vincent uh, gets kissed by Frankie, and just on a visual mm-hmm. this Vex perspective, I was like, oh, how did they do that? No, no, it was because during the scene, it, it did the the standard thing where you know it doesn't cuts to back ahead while you do the other one, mm. and and then it cut to them side by side. I went, 
oh, okay, we don't see this that often on this show. You know, they've done it a few times. Yeah, but that's um, not that weird an effect, though. That's a pretty simple split screen No, no it effect. is, but even then, they still tend to not bother that much on this show because it's just more effort than it needs to be. Uh, also, the, go, go, the, the, the going back and forth where you see the back of their heads is a short reverse shot, just for the, just for the, the terminology. Yes, I know. It just doesn't really matter. I was being specific here to, to show it was hiding their faces. Nah, you were using you were using a uh, layman's terminology. I fixed it for you. You're welcome. Using layman's terminology is fine for the audience. But either way, my point was, you know, even the the side by side shot, they don't, you know, even though it's relatively easy, they still don't do it that often on this show. Mm. They tend to avoid it as much as they can. So I noticed it when they did it, and then they went for the actual interaction, which was, you know, significantly more impressive. Yeah. Uh, and then, but then, then physical contact happened, which was the impressive part because that's not yeah. normal. You know, whether or not anything else is normal in this show, that is not a normal thing you do when two actors are playing the same thing. Uh, yeah. And it looked good. It's just, so. it's just way more effort than than just anything else you can do. But yeah, he tells him Rudy's pissed, and you know, Frankie gets kind of he's like, ah, "F Rudy," and I'm like, ah, "That's not going to end well for you." And sure enough, Rudy, yeah. Rudy comes by the parlor, and he's, he's there to show him something important. Actually, he's there to show him that. Uh, some of these amateur reels are actually sneaking in some uh, underage material in the booths, and the idea is, is that people who know to look for it know where it is. They can like find it, you know, and you know, a few minutes into the the film or whatever it is. Yeah. And Frankie obviously is disgusted; he doesn't want to see it. But Rudy's like, "No, hey, you did this on your own, and you, you, you know, you, you be negligent is what's caused this. And you're supposed to be working for me, and you went to someone else with your amateur shit, and you know, you're supposed well, to come. This me is in. what he does." And, you know, Frankie's like, hey, you could have cut me in when I showed that I, I could earn you money, but you didn't. So, you, and he gets kind of mouthy with them. So he says, F you. And he, he gets, he says, get out of my parlor. And he hits, sees the coins out of his hand. And um, you know, the look in Rudy's face here, really, you know, the acting was quite good. The look in Rudy's face really told me a lot about how he was feeling it, in this particular moment. It, it was it was shock rather than anger, though. Which I thought was interesting. Well, I think there was a bit more than just shock. I think it was shock and, a, like... I think there was like a, I, I, you know, he, it was shocking that I am superior to him and he's doing this. I think mm. it's, it's shock that's going to lead to anger. Well, well, it almost certainly will. But in that moment, he was he wasn't immediately angry. There wasn't that instantaneous rage uh, of a reaction that you know could have happened. It was more of a. I'm, a, a I'm going to disagree. That someone no, is talking to him. That I'm way. going to disagree slightly and say that it's, it's slightly there behind the eyes. Like you know, it is mainly shock. But it's shock with another layer behind it because as he's looking at him, it's kind of like, hmm. you know, that, 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 that person who's insulted and is just so shocked they're insulted, but you can see behind their eyes they're kind of seething about it. Like, they're just not processing yeah, yeah. how they're feeling yet. Yeah, that's so, why I said surprise more than anger, not not instead of. But it is there, though. But that's why I'm saying it because you can see it in his eyes. I, I, I could feel his anger in the moment. Mm. Um, it, it, you know, it was when he, he said what he did, and obviously when he steps out at the end and looks down, you know, f you know, from the cubicle when he steps out, he's still pissed. But um, it feels like you know, I think season one and two, where we kept talking about how Frankie might end up getting himself into some some bother with Rudy, and he kept kind of like circumventing it and just like Frank, you know, Vincent would kind of smooth it over or whatever. Not I, this time. This maybe. is the final season though, so if it's going to happen, if if Frankie's going to meet his grisly end. And piss Rudy off enough for it to happen from his end, then uh, it's the time. And here's the thing: I don't know if it will end that badly for Frankie. Weirdly, because things just seem to work out for him they somehow. Do. And e even though that would be the way to end it, right? Well, this time it didn't. I still kind of have an expectation that it will work out for him somehow. Yeah, yeah. As the same with Rudy and Tommy as well. Uh, you know, actually, it starts with Rudy and our, our boss, where he's he's talking about how how fancy, te how quickly technology is moving now, and how oh they've got VHS tapes now, soon it'll be a hologram, <laughs> and you know that's funny because of the time period. But um, you know, Tommy comes in and he's like, he, he basically he's muttering things under his breath about these other like individuals who come in who are part of the sort of the newer drug trade in the city, yeah. And he kind of looks down on them and kind of you know thinks of them as scum. And Tommy's like, hey, that's where the money is. And we know Tommy's been doing some of this on the side with, with uh, Frankie. And he's like, no, no, that, that shit will take you down quick as anything. Um, and I, I do I do wonder where their story's going to end up. I feel like Tommy might have a have a better end if, if Rudy finds out what little, he's been doing. A little bit of betrayal going yeah. on, yeah. Um, but you knew it was evil, Tommy, because of the moustache. 
Can't argue with that. Tommy's betrayed him because he's got a moustache now. Uh, so, yeah, you have that going. And then, obviously, in Vincent's side, Vincent doesn't have as much. He does go to Paul at one point to collect his money, and Paul's a little bit short. And again, it shows how good friends they are. They're very pleasant with each other. Um, but when he goes to Rudy, Rudy's like, hey, everything's down across the board. I'm going to have to ask you to work extra hard, more promotions, make more revenue in every, every place. Yeah, and, and he's not saying you're down. It's, you know, you're doing fine. It's just everywhere else is kind of slacking. So we need you to pick up some of the some of that headroom somewhere else. Well, it wasn't quite slacking, though. It was more there was reasons for it. It wasn't like just people are being... Oh, I meant that the yeah. money was slacking, not the, 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 the people behind it. Uh, but he says that, hey, just on, in terms of Paul's place, like that's not light because anyone's stealing it. It's light because it's light because of the disease. And Rudy and, actually and is quite receptive to that. He's like, yeah, I, I, you know. it's like, like, I, I get the situation. This is not his fault. So, no. So once again, Rudy always comes across as a fairly sensible crime boss. Shockingly reasonable. Yes. So fair play to him. Uh, but I mean, that, that was the episode. Like I guess there was a lot of plots going on. It was jumping around a lot. Yeah. A lot, a lot. Um, to the point where it's, it's almost hard to keep track of everything that's going on in, in a single episode sometimes. But th- this one especially, feel like it was jumping around quite a bit. Uh, which is I not- did, and listen, this, this is the first time I felt the, the time passage feel a bit weird. That's fair. Um, I, I think it's fair to say, though, that uh, everything in particular was up to its uh, usual standards. Performances across the board were very good. There was a lot of great moments. I mentioned Rudy, of course, with the shock, but um, even even just something as simple as uh, as Eileen, like having the, the the shock laughter of not being humiliated and someone seeming interested in what she does. Like, yeah. Even moments like that, where the, the performances were kind of shining through. Uh, yeah, I think all the individual scenes and moments are great and on par with the very consistent quality this show has always had. Uh, I don't know if this one comes together as an episode as much as some of the others have done in the past. Mm. Although that has admittedly never been this show's strongest point. Yeah, if I was mentioned as well, uh, Vincent and his and the ex-wife uh, bonding a little bit at the the party, and yeah, yeah. The, the the grandfather or his father rather pointing out, "Hey, don't let this one get away again. You two seem to be." having a good time and he's uh rather drunk yeah and she's also asking oh where's abby and he's oh he had a shadow's thing and we know she's helping someone at the hospital it's, it's not like she's <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah but the, the way it comes across yeah. does feel like oh she just didn't want to be here yeah it does feel that way so no uh all, all the plots are uh spinning and uh, i'm looking forward to episode three so uh, that is the Deuce episode 2 of season 3. Let us know what you think of the episode in the comments below. Like and subscribe, all the usual stuff. Get us on the Twitters at mail underscore fuzz for channel updates. If you want to support the show and everything we do here, head over to patreon.com slash mailfuzztv where you can support us for as little as $1 per month and help keep all the content coming. Uh, check out all the other shows review on YouTube or on the uh, Almost Cancelled podcast feed that you might be on or the Almost Cancelled Netflix originals feed, which is where all the Netflix reviews go. Uh, but that is us, so thank you once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching TV, guys. Have you got any vanilla?